Now your standard engine might run on fuel and air, but at this shop, we run on trial and error. And on today's episode of Too Cheap to Pay for Real Performance Parts, we take a stock head and try and turn it into something high performance. Now the motor that we're working on is a Rotax 440 that's in my open mod grass drag sled. Now as far as the engine goes, it's mostly worked over a little bit. The one thing that really hasn't been done to it is compression. Believe it or not, this thing still runs on just 90 octane pump gas. That's the original head for the motor. Now, being that we're going to try and go all out, maybe it's actually time to run her on real race fuel. Now, I, it pains me to pay that much per gallon though, believe it. It's really been nice being able to run the entire grass drag fleet off of one can of fuel. The leaf blower, the buzzard, this thing. Heck, I even run the two-stroke mix in the old truck if I have to. But those old pipes ain't seen no race gas in quite a while. Maybe it's time. So now we're at the point where we're trying to get more compression out of this thing. And you can get custom-made heads that have like domes machined into them. Unfortunate thing is that costs like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I ain't paying for that and we really don't have the time either to try and get all that sorted out. So we're going to go with the tried and true method of scrounging up parts from the junk pile. So there's definitely a couple extra heads laying around. Uh, I actually don't have too many of the 440 parts because those seem to be hard to come by. Old 7500s, I don't know, I've scrapped at least a half dozen of them over the years. You know, those usually get rotted and left out and uh, filled with water. So even if the bottom end of the motor's shot, uh, the heads are still good. And that's what we have here. We're going to try and make a 340 head work on a 440. Now you can see here that the dome shape is definitely a bit smaller on the 340. What we're going to have to do is open up the diameter here on the outside of the squish band to match what the 440 is. And another interesting aspect is the domes in the 440 heads look to be cast, whereas the 340 actually was pre-machined. So maybe the castings were so far off that they had to go in here and clean it up. But uh, having that all machined out, that should be a lot more consistent combustion chamber shape. Not exactly sure how much that's going to raise the compression ratio. We're going to have to crunch some numbers and maybe do a volumetric calculation here with some water in that. But just jam a spark plug in there and then use a, well this is like a syringe of sorts to measure out how much water you need to fill this up until it's completely flat. Now per usual, we don't have the proper tools or resources to actually try and modify this head. However, not going to let that stop you because where there's a will, well, maybe there's a way. We've actually got this little like gasket cutter thing here, which is like a blade on a drill and also have a spark plug that busted out all of the ceramics in. Now it just so happens that the ID of that spark plug is pretty close to the diameter of that drill bit which we flipped around backwards in here so it's not cutting. Gonna thread that in and then now we can drop this down into here and that's gonna keep this whole thing centered up. We'll chuck this up into the drill press and we've got a sorta of half-assed milling machine. We'll get a little bit creative on this cutter here and we'll grind ourselves a flat cutting surface that just needs to take off maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so of this lip right here to extend it over. We gotta get this beyond the outside of the piston so you don't have any interferences. And also gonna kinda blend in a little bit of the edge of the squish band to match the dome shape of the piston. So we put a custom grind on there yeah that's precision because it's not just a drill all right well here's about the moment of truth I don't think we're gonna film it in case it gets screwed up Well, that was slightly stressful, but 
seems to be coming along. I mean, that's pretty much a bridge port. So we ran into a little problem with the head. Now, I'm not saying that we're not hack, but we actually tried to run some calculations on some of the scientific data behind two strokes. And as it turns out, that squish band there is very important to, you know, basically avoid pre-ignition and a bunch of other factors. There's some ratios that have to do with engine RPM, et cetera, et cetera. And when we tried to basically open up the diameter of that, there's too much of a percentage of squish band here for the RPM that we're trying to run. We found this bearing here laying on the shelf. And if you look, it doesn't quite sit down to the bottom of the dome on the 340 head. But if you set it into the one on the 440, there's plenty of room on both sides. So after some careful laser calibrated eye measurements, we've determined that the outer radius diameter of this bearing is going to be the right dome chamber size for this head. Once we get those contours to match, we should be home free. So found an old junk bearing in the pile that was no longer usable. Tack welded a nut onto the top and then took the grinder and sort of just sharpened up the edges a little bit. Now we almost rigged up a setup to put this into the drill press, but then we kind of got in a hurry. Throwing the socket adapter into the old drill. What? And with a little bit of brute force, that basically took care of the dome. You can see the stock went over there. And you might have to sharpen this a couple of times and, well, chip off some of that molten aluminum, but aluminum's a lot softer and it's weaker, you know. Put enough force on there, it'll give. Come out surprisingly well. Yeah, this might be a case of engine butchery, but you know what? It's what's on the inside that counts. And nobody's going to see this what's on the inside. So as long as it works... There it is. Now I'm going to finish it up with a little bit of emery cloth. Put just a slight radius around there at the edge of the squish band. Clean up any high spots. That's about ready to go. Tell you what, a little bit of scotch bright pad, buff that out. And this completed part is about ready for some testing. Now time will tell whether it works awesome, or maybe it's just prone to absolute detonation. But you know what? We're definitely going to give it a shot. Because making parts like these, sure, you can always go out and spend money, buy aftermarket parts already made, or you could send this stuff out, get it machined, have it custom made. It's all just a question of money, right? But I get a certain sense of satisfaction when you can take secondhand parts and try and upgrade them yourself and make them into something. Especially when that job is normally considered something that the average Joe can't do. I mean, I really wish I had a, a mill or a lathe. Just because you don't have the tools to do the job doesn't mean it should stop you from doing it. Often people don't even consider the options of making your own tools or coming up with a non-standard way to accomplish something. And for some reason, just spending a little bit of time doing the slow manual labor of a file or some sandpaper, well, that's not even considered as an option to finish a part. In other countries, and in times previous, they didn't always have fancy CNC shops. You just had to get stuff done with what you had. And always taking the easy route out, well, that often becomes your go-to, and you start not even considering the alternative methods. When somebody asks, where'd you buy that? Or, who did the work? Being able to say everything came from here, that's a sense of accomplishment that's hard to beat. So after doing all that work, ended up running some squish band tests and just didn't like the shape of this outer perimeter here. And also when we CC'd the volume of the heads, there was almost no difference from a stock head. Not sure if this one had the dome set slightly further down or what, but 
just wasn't going to get the gains that I wanted to get out of it. So back to the drawing board. We got the uh, boring bar here and just basically tacked on a piece of key stock, ground it into a, an edge, and uh, we're using that to reshape the squish band. At this stage, to get an even cut, we gave up on the vise. We're just straight up bolting this thing right to the plate and then shimming it to get a consistent uh, touch point when you bring down the cutting edge. So check at four points using the dial. to make sure it's level. Since this isn't hardened steel, it keeps losing the edge, so you gotta keep touching it up on the disc sander. I wish this was slower. So hopefully that new profile will work out a lot better than that one. And we just gotta try and match it up now. Now the problem is, we're redoing the squish band, everything's getting further away from the piston. So our squish is gonna get more than we like. Gonna have to go back and plane this head. And this is gonna be the old school method of taking a thick piece of glass and basically putting a piece of emery cloth or sandpaper on it and using that as your flatness guide to mill away material. I've done this with thinner pieces of glass. Heck, I've even used the disc sander to get stuff roughed into shape and then come back to the glass to give it the final flatness. But this piece is like 3 8 inch thick. Got it on Amazon. I think it was like 20 bucks or something like that, but it does the job pretty well. Just used some spray adhesive and stuck the sandpaper right onto it. So it does a good enough job of keeping it from moving around. And after an hour of cardio, there you go. Could have started with a heavier grit, but that ended up working out. And that configuration is what we ended up using. Now I had to throw things together at the last minute. Surprise, surprise. Well, the mod's about ready to go, which means it got started and it runs. Running high octane, different prim primary, different secondary, basically threw the whole kitchen sink at it. It did run and it didn't blow up. However, I don't think the full gains were really realized. Uh, did a lot of clutching changes, some jetting, changed the head all at the same time, and really have yet to dial it in fully. But that's what next season's for, so 